Hey, good afternoon, folks. Welcome to Voice for Restoration podcast. And we're just going to take about 10 minutes to talk about a subject that is on my heart this week. And, and that is honor. And why uh, I'm going to be speaking on this at the Gate Church this week. But uh, why I want to talk about this and why it's so important. And the reason is, is honor is uh, like the um, door of your heart. And what you honor, you receive from. No one ever receives from anyone they don't honor. Uh, it just doesn't happen. When you, when you don't have honor for the one speaking or the person you're with, you shut yourself off to them. And so it's a, it's a really uh, important, probably not spoken about enough, important topic to discuss. And you know, Jesus talked a lot about it. He said a prophet is not without honor, except for as in his own city, his own town, with his own family, with his own friends. And that's where dishonor takes place because we're familiar and we and we don't listen anymore. And, and I want to just talk real quickly, briefly, really quick about some of my times where I've had to repent because I realized that um, I was offended. And I'm not saying it even wasn't even justified that I was offended, that someone said something to me that was pretty rude. And then I would be in a, uh, in a meeting and they were speaking and the Lord would speak to me and says, you know, you've closed your heart to this person. And I, I would sit there in the meeting and have to repent before they got up there because I wasn't prepared to receive. And that's a really bad place to be. And, and um, <clears throat> you know, this is what breaks down in churches, uh, in business, in uh, many things. The breakdown of honor is probably the cause for the most church splits. But we don't call it honor. We call it disagreement. And so I would often tell my leadership, it's okay to disagree, just not disconnect. But once you start disconnecting and uh, you disconnect without talking, without explaining, uh, without trying to resolve the disconnect, you are actually in dishonor. Um, you know, and this is, um, you know, something I learned. I didn't learn... Let me just say this. It took me a while to learn this in the church. I did not learn this before the church, uh, how important honor was. Uh, I didn't learn it in the military because in the military, you're forced to honor the uniform, not the person. But doesn't that kind of scapegoat the person in the sense of, no, I have to really honor you. And in the church, as, as believers, we're to honor people. They're made in the image of God. And uh, James talks about this, that they're they're made in the similitude of God, and how can we how can we curse them, and how can we um, um, uh, do evil and speak evil of them? And and let me just say this really uh, briefly, you know Jesus talked that you that if you receive someone, you receive Christ. He talked about this in Matthew chapter ten. Uh, he says anyone who uh, receives you receives me. And it's really it seems crazy, doesn't it, that it would all hinge. This is why, by the way, this is why we as leaders, we as Christians need to have impeccable character because I don't want to cause someone else to stumble by my bad character. If I do that, then I can actually cause my brother to stumble. And and, and let's say you're not a believer. Uh, let me just give you an example, if I could do this. I'm going to read some scripture. When I was in the Navy... There was a gentleman there. He was a he was a uh, born again Christian, and he was writing answers to his to our advancement exams on his hand. And someone said to him, "That's cheating." He says, "It doesn't say thou shalt not cheat." Is what he actually said. And um, you know, since we were all going up for the same, you know, everyone was taking that advancement exam. Obviously, you're now you're dishonoring the people that are also going for it. You're dis you're 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 lying in so many different ways. And later on, he tried to tell me about Jesus, and I would not listen to him. Why? Because of that act, I saw a lack of character, and therefore I had no honor. When I had no honor, I could not receive even the words of life that were being spoken to me. And we can actually cause other people to stumble. And so you have to guard your heart, like the scripture says, for out of it flow the issues of life. You have to guard it with all diligence because the enemy will use anything it can. I think that's uh, Proverbs 4. 
guard your heart with all diligence for out of the flow of the issues of life. Um, the enemy will use anything uh, that it can to cause you to um, uh, devalue those around you. Once that begins to happen, it's like a cancer. Um, this is why um, people leave churches. This is why, and sometimes it's justified, sometimes it's not, but they'll never, very, very seldom will anyone ever tell you, I have to leave because I have no more honor for the person you know, I, I can't receive, I have no more. They don't ever look at it as, boy, something got in their cross somewhere and they are um, a little bit on the um, uh, outs with somebody. And I, I can tell you, I've, I've been I've been an usher, I've been a minister, and I can tell you there are there, there's a battle there. And I didn't really catch on to honor about, until about 95, 96, because I'd watch people who didn't... Um, who didn't like Rodney Howard Brown, people didn't like Rick Joyner, people didn't like this person. And the more I got into ministry, the more I got around ministers, the more I found that people talked about other ministers, which I had then had to guard my heart more. And I'm gonna, I, I remember that I met this one minister, you know this person if I spoke his name, he is known throughout the world. And the first time I met this person, he was kind of rude to me. He kind of just pushed me aside like, you're nothing. I don't need. I don't. I don't need to talk to you. Who are you? He basically said, "Who are you?" Like that kind of attitude, and it was real snobbish. And I didn't take that well. I just went, "Okay," in the memory bank, which I shouldn't have done. In the memory bank, and I will never give you that honor again. That was my fault. That was a sin on my fault, which I had to repent of because I I I've learned that sometimes people have a bad moment. And I can't base their full character and their full life off of that. But Jesus still tells me, especially when they're a minister, to have honor because I can't receive from it. It says this. I mean, let's turn to Matthew uh, chapter 10 real quick. And um, and then I'm going to let you go. Because this is the podcast. So again, um, uh, thank you for, if you're uh, following us on uh, all the different podcast platforms. It says this. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me, uh, re uh, him who receives me receives him who sent me. So here's the deal: Do you know that you could cut off the the receiving of the Father by not receiving that one next to you? Because if you don't receive that one next to you, you don't receive Jesus. Therefore, you don't receive the Father. It's really, really stunning, isn't it? And he says, He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And so I'm determining by my level of honor what I can receive from the same person. In other words, from a prophet, I can receive a prophet's reward. Or from a prophet, I can just receive a righteous man's reward. Let me give you an example of this in my own life. When the Lord had me go to Webb, Alabama to um, Bill Johnson was speaking there in a in a conference, three-day conference, six meetings, Sunday morning through Tuesday night. And um, I was there to have Bill lay hands on me. I've already emailed Judy Franklin and all that. You've heard this story before. But I'm walking up the steps and the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, you must receive the apostle in the name of an apostle if you want the apostle's reward. And I was there to have Bill Johnson lay hands on me to uh, activate my apostle apostolic mantle and I knew that going in because the Lord had talked talk to me but the Lord said look he's not now by the way Bill that time they weren't talking a lot about apostles publicly and all that stuff and so there wasn't a lot of mention I read heaven invades earth he didn't mention it in there and um and I didn't know Bill all I knew is he was the senior pastor at Bethel Reading that's all I knew and but I knew he was a kingdom guy because that's what I was told. And so um, I said to the Holy Spirit, walking up, I receive him as an apostle, but I'm asking that he lays hands on me five times. Because I remember in the book, Heaven Invades Earth, that Bill said Randy Clark prayed for him five times. And the reason Bill wanted five times was because Rodney Howard Brown paid for, prayed for Randy five times. And I wanted to continue that. And I sought that from the Lord. And I walk into the double doors. And I bow my head because they're about to pray. It's, it's 9.45. And they had a Bible study from 9.15, 9.45 in the sanctuary with the pastor. And, and I walked in the doors. And I go, let us pray. And I went, 
And this man reaches out and begins to pray for me. And that man was Bill Johnson. He was waiting for them to get done with their Bible study before he went up front. And he just starts praying for me. And that was number one. And, and honor is such, think about honor as being the thing that swings the door open of your heart that allows you to receive. It also means you have to be careful what you give honor to. Like, don't give honor to lies. Don't give honor to um, bad doctrine. Don't give honor to uh, perversion and stuff like that. Because whatever you give honor to, and honor can be um, uh, displayed in many different ways, which I'll talk in my sermon. But I want you to really think about that for a second, that honor has to do with how you give. Honor has to do with the way that you listen. Honor has to do with the way that you have affection. Uh, honor has the way that you, um, you minister. Uh, it's the way you learn on business. It's how you do your job. It's all those things. Like if, when you have honor for a boss who's paying, paying you, you don't show up. Like if your shift starts at 8 o'clock, you don't show up at 8 o'clock and spend three minutes getting your stuff together so you can start working. You actually show up early, 10 minutes early, if it takes you that long to get ready. So at 8 o'clock, when it's time to get paid, you are ready to get paid. Why? That's showing honor that you're paying me to do eight hours of work. You're not paying me to be on premises for eight hours. Okay? And that's important to understand. Honor is something I had to learn because I did not really have it in the Navy uh, I had respect, I understood authority, but I did not understand the principle of honor. So in this week's podcast, I really want you to understand that honor is something that, um, this is, you know what, you know where we see most dishonor is among Christians criticizing other Christians. That's totally false. Uh, it's totally wicked to do that. And I see it a lot, I see it a lot on YouTube. And, um, you know, I don't live, watch those things. I, I, I'm not a fan of Christians doing videos against other Christians. And why? Because it breeds a dishonor. It breeds a, um, a, a wrong spirit. Okay, it's, it's good to preach against doctrine that's bad. Like if someone's telling you that homosexuality is not sin, I don't mind that. Okay, but be careful before you start pointing out someone unless they are really way out there and stuff like that. And there are some exceptions, obviously. To every rule, there's kind of an exception. But let's not go to the extremes. Let's just cultivate in our hearts uh, a place of honor, a place of real value for those around us, those that we encounter every day. And you will find that if you do this, that you'll find that the blessing of the Lord increases on you and that you hear God more accurately, more fervently, more frequently, because your heart is open at all times to receive from him by receiving those around you. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, would you go ahead and hit the subscribe button? Would you go ahead and turn on the notifications and share it on your social media platform? Remember, we have podcasts on a bunch of different platforms. All those links are going to be in the video below. If you're watching this on video, you can sign up for our podcast where you'll get this beforehand and uh, you can listen to these right on your device. Love you and God bless you. May you have a great, great day. Bye-bye.